Hi everyone and welcome to another Langmuir Systems Fusion 360 tutorial video. In the last video, we created a plasma cutting setup. In this video, we'll cover generating a toolpath in a 2D profile, then previewing the toolpath to see what the crossfire will do when we bring the G-code to the machine. We're picking up directly where we left off in the last video, with the architectural plate in the fabrication submenu of the manufacturing workspace. We'll now select the 2D Profile option above the Cutting drop-down menu. With the 2D Profile menu up, the first thing we'll do is select our plasma cutter. Navigate to your local library and select the cutter we created in the earlier video, then click OK. We'll leave Cutting Mode set to Through Auto. Since the crossfire doesn't have any internal quality settings, we'll need to set Feed Rate how fast the torch moves in inches per minute while the torch is firing, here. This value will differ and vary widely based on several factors, including plasma cutter amperage, the type of material you're cutting, and how thick that material is. Most plasma cutter user manuals will include a simple cut chart with some recommended feed rates. However, razor weld plasma cutters do not. There are great user-generated razor weld cut charts available on our forum to use as a starting point, but you might find that this process will take some fine tuning. For this particular part, we're cutting 14 gauge mild steel with a 45 amp plasma cutter. We'll set our values here to 100 inches per minute before moving on to the geometry tab. I'll take a moment to mention that, unlike the setup menu, the 2D profile menu is not editable after you've clicked OK or pressed the enter key. Be careful not to do so or you'll need to start this process over again. The first option we're given in the Geometry tab is Contour Selection, which essentially means selecting the lines that we want to cut. We'll start with the outside line, then all the interior lines. As I do so, you'll notice the red arrows that appear next to each line. This is in reference to which side of the line and which direction the plasma cutter will travel when being used on the crossfire. During plasma cutting, material is removed equal to the kerf width, so the side of the line this arrow appears on is significant. You can change which side of the line the arrow is on by clicking the arrow. Evaluate each arrow to ensure that the arrows are on the outside of the outermost contour line, but on the inside of any inner geometry. Zooming in might be necessary for the smaller portions. As far as cutting direction, you should always cut counterclockwise for inner geometry and clockwise outside. We'll get more into that later. If you're cutting a complex part made from multiple sketches, tick the box for same plane faces. This one is simple enough that we can skip this. We'll leave the settings all loops and start outside set to their defaults, but you might want to read over what these options can do for later projects. Tabs are useful for parts that are small enough to fit between the crossfire slats. For this particular part, we can leave tabs deselected and move on. We can skip the Heights tab as the Crossfire is a two-axis machine with no Z-axis control. If you're using the Crossfire Pro, we'll cover this later. We'll set several important values in the Passes tab, the first of which being Tolerance. This value determines how closely the toolpaths, moving in tiny, positive, or negative X or Y motion, match what we perceive as a solid line. Setting a smaller value here will result in larger file sizes, whereas setting a larger value will result in smaller file sizes. Large file sizes might be an issue for very complex parts, but with a simple part like this, a tiny value here, like 4 ten thousandths of an inch, is fine. Next, we'll set our sideways compensation, which alters the direction of the cutter's movement as I mentioned before. For most cutters, the best side to compensate for is the right side due to the swirl ring torch construction. Since we need to compensate for the right side, we'll compensate to the left side. So we can leave this as is. Next, we'll set compensation type to in computer because we want to generate a toolpath that compensates for the kerf diameter and the side that we've set. You can also optionally tick the preserve order box to cut the contour lines in the order in which you selected them in the geometry tab. We'll leave stock to leave deselected, as we already essentially did this during the setup process in our previous video. Smoothing is not necessary for this particular part, as it is made up of mostly straight lines, but I'd still like to touch on it for a moment. 
In order for the CNC machine to calculate how to replicate a curved line while cutting in two axes, it can do one of two things. One, it can follow a low tolerance, set a bunch of points close together along the curve, and then connect them using very small straight lines. Or two, it can follow a high tolerance, thereby setting the points along the curve further apart, then specifying the radius of an arc to follow between those two further away points. This second process is the one that smoothing follows. If your part has many curved lines, you might get better results if you increase your tolerance and turn smoothing on. We'll also set several important values in the linking tab, the first of which is keep nozzle down. This feature will maneuver the torch in such a way to avoid any previously cut areas so that the nozzle does not accidentally strike a tip up while cutting or wrapping between parts. If you're using the Crossfire Pro with torch eye control, keep this option deselected. Since the Crossfire has no z-axis control, we'll want the torch to always maneuver like this. So we'll set the longest dimension of the Crossfire as the maximum stay down distance, 25.3 inches in the standard configuration or 33.3 .3 inches for the Crossfire XL. Cut stop clearance, which is how close we're willing to get to previously cut areas, will depend on the nozzle of your cutter. If your plasma cutter you're using as a shield, you'll want to set a higher value. For now, we'll leave this set to 0.1 inches. We'll leave forced retreat off as it can't be done with the crossfire. We can set the stay down feed rate to the rapid speed the crossfire is capable of achieving, 300 inches per minute. For projects with a higher chance of tip ups, you might want to set this value lower. Next, we'll set our lead ins. Lead-ins allow for smooth starts in plasma cutting by initially firing the torch away from the body of the part, then coming into the contour line from the outside or from within one of the holes. This prevents the piercing process of the cutter from initially firing and creating an imperfection along the contour line. We'll leave lead-ins selected, but deselect lead-outs. For the lead-in radius, we'll set something small to fit within these holes, like 0.06 inches. For the sweep angle, we'll set 90 degrees. Since we set in computer compensation, we can set lead in distance to zero. We'll keep the default settings for pierce clearance. And finally, we just need to select an entry position. We'll select a point near the center of this long line here. Click OK and you're done. A toolpath is now generated. You'll notice a new toolpath appear under Setup from the drop-down menu on the left. These yellow lines indicate the path our plasma cutter will follow, with the red dot indicating the beginning of the program and the green dot indicating the end. To preview the toolpath and see exactly what the crossfire will do when cutting this part, click Simulate above the Actions drop-down. This black circle represents our plasma torch. Click the play button at the bottom of the screen to watch the torch navigate the toolpath. You can edit the preview speed with this bar under the play button. Please note that this is not a way to edit your feed rate, only to change the preview speed. This break in the bar indicates zero speed. Sliding the tool to the left at this point will move the preview in reverse. That concludes this video. In the next, we'll cover post-processing our part into a complete G-code, ready for the crossfire to cut. Thanks for watching.